What's up, everybody? This is Paul Newell, your new wellness guide, bringing you some things that I have been observing recently, being more in the health and wellness industry, working at a family fitness facility. So here's some things. Like, I, first of all, I've been I've been training people since I was what 20, 22, not 20, yeah, about 20, and. I've always experienced like uh, I just appreciate the opportunity to work with people and and help them to achieve, um, which as I've found out over the years goes beyond the health and wellness game. It goes into life. It goes into oh, wellness is part of life. Um, the careers, all different types of things. So recently, um, I've been working. I, I have taken on a job as a full time trainer. Um, first time I've done that. Usually, uh, well, actually, not the first. First time we're doing that for someone else. Before I was doing it for just for myself, or uh, doing it for myself. And what I recognize, especially being around more people and having more opportunities to connect with people, I found that there are four trends that really stand out that are are um, I guess impeding or or stifling people's health and well being efforts. And from them really getting what they want. Uh, so this video is about those four elements. I've written them down so I can stay on target. Because sometimes I can get on my soapbox and go off on some shit. So this time I'm going to really stick with it. And here are the four things that I found are um, stifling or blocking people from their true health and well-being. Uh, boredom. Education. Intimidation. And impatient projections. So, yeah. Boredom, education, intimidation, and impatient projections. What are all those things and what do they mean? Well, I'm glad you're thinking that. I'm glad you asked. First, boredom. One of the things I recognize uh, working with people and seeing like people going like, okay, I want to lose weight. I want to get shape. I'm going to do cardio. Great. And I recognize that, especially as I talk to people that um, fall off of going on to the gym, uh, there's a part of boredom that they start to uh, that starts to set in when they're doing the same thing every single time. And eventually, the brain becomes it goes on autopilot. The brain and body go on autopilot. They're like, "Oh, I know what we're about to do. We're about to hit the stairmaster for 20 minutes, and then we're gonna go. Um, then we're gonna walk on the treadmill on a 1% incline at 3.5 miles per hour." I got this. Click autopilot. So all of a sudden, now everything becomes stagnant. Uh, all of a sudden, results are few and far between. Then when results are few and far between, guess what? People stop coming. That's what happens, right? And maybe it happened to you. I know it's happened to me several times. Now, what do you do to combat this, first of all? So I'm like talking about these things that I see as concerns. What do we do to combat this? Vary up your routine, switch it up, have fun, get connected to your body. What can those things mean? Try a different class, try a different piece of cardio, work with a trainer to find a new program to do something different for yourself, right? Try to do something different. When you do something different, your brain, you, you become different. Your brain starts to create new pathways to accomplish different tasks. So that's the benefit of switching things up. Doing some strength training, hopping on a machine, hopping in a yoga class, maybe try Pilates, try a different supplement. I don't know. Just different things to switch up the boredom, make it very, switch it up, change it up. That's the path to growth and that's the path to stay. That's one of the paths to stay on your health and well-being game. The second one, education. I hear this a lot. People are like, well, you know, I just, you know, I just part of the boredom, right? They're like, well, I just, I know how to do cardio. I don't really know the machines. And the thing that's really wild is that people will continue going in the dark until someone offers them a lantern. It says, hey, you, psst, psst, by the way, you can do other things besides just cardio. Or but, so it would be like, oh, hey, somebody's stumbling around in the dark. Hey, guess what? Here's a light switch. So people, get yourself educated on different things that you can do. Educate yourself on yourself. What are some things that work well with your body? What are some things like when are you, for example, at uh, the place where I work, one of the things they have is a metabolic, uh, active metabolic assessment test um, or assessment really. So as you can track like when your body's burning fat, when it's burning carbs, the specific zones for each body. 
Most people go on a general calculation and there's so much, there's a, there's a different way to be more effective and efficient when we're doing work at the gym or doing work where, wherever. This is like fit, fitness and wellness or fitness and health and well-being tips. And this can really apply to anything and everything. So educate yourself. The education will stifle people because they're like, well, I don't know about that one. So I'm not even going to give it a go. And most people do that rather than asking for some help and assistance in learning something new. And again, this is where sometimes if you're a fitness professor watching this, sometimes you got to go outside the bounds. Like if you see somebody doing the same damn thing all the time, like, hey, you want to try something different today? Sure. All right, cool. Let's work, man. Let's do some work. And that's how it can go. You can give them, you can spark new growth in their mind, spark new growth in their body, spark new growth in their spirit. Because you may, the body's fascinating. Learning new things can unlock different parts of the body, different parts of the mind and spirit. So get yourself educated. Now, this can also lead into the third thing that I have witnessed a lot of, intimidation. I see a lot of people when they come, when they haven't been to the gym in a while, or they used to be at a certain fitness level, and when they come back, there's a, they're intimidated by whether it's people doing Olympic lifts, or people hitting weights, or people that are stronger, or people that look like they know what they're doing. And people will shy away from really stepping out and trying something different. Um, like, I see this a lot when I teach class. Like, I teach an animal flow class and a primal flow, and like... I, I do the disclaimer of saying, hey, listen, we're going to get a little silly here. It's going to be a little different. So you're going to feel some different things. I put it out there because you know what? People get to learn that. People get to understand that there's really, there's, there's few, th the, the thing that we get intimidated by is our own selves. Like we think ourselves out of things. Like I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to be free of speaking for you. I speak for myself. I can talk myself out of things thinking like, ah, I don't know if I could do that. Oh, this is going to be painful, blah, blah, blah. And the intimidation factor would have me shying away from things. And I see a lot in other people too. Um, and the wildest thing that I love about it is that, and this is to, to combat this, a lot of, uh, to combat the intimidation is to really focus on the education, getting support, asking for assistance, um, getting assistance, receiving assistance. Because I tell you what, the people that I've worked with so far that have all, that have all said, oh, I've been intimidated at gym to do this, blah, blah, blah. As soon as I've taught them some things in the, in the fitness floor, they are they freaking light up. They're like, I didn't even know I could do this. Blah. Especially like when I put them on an assisted pull-up, people get freaking, it's like they hit a whole new realm when they, when, they, when they pull their bodies up. It's bananas. If you're a fitness professional, try it. If you're, free of, if you're, not a, if you're somebody other than a fitness professional, go to your gym, try an assisted pull-up. If you're unsure how to do it, please talk to a trainer first. Get, this, get the safety scoop. Get it. All right. Now, that's the that's the third one. The fourth one, the last one is impatient projections. What do I mean by that? Well, people will be free of going to the gym for years, years, and then they'll come back to the gym and expect to get in shape in two days. Nah, doesn't work that way. That's an impatient projection. You're projecting ahead that this is what's going to happen in two weeks. Now, if we're going to make a projection, okay, uh, let's space it out. Let's start to forecast. So uh, for people that are impatient, like, hey, I want this now, or like, I'm going on a trip, so I need to look like this. Listen, first of all, recognize that any shift that you're about to make is about lifestyle. It's free of being about an event or a specific stat. It's about lifestyle. So this is a long-term thing. The thing to also recognize is that if you're going to project something, really project it and make some forecasts. Like, hey, listen, I forecast that in a month, I'm going to be down 2%. I'm going to have 2% less body fat. Then uh, I forecast in two months, I'm going to have a cumulative, I'm going to be down a cumulative of maybe 6% percentage points down in my body fat. When we start to create these small, um, these little nuggets, like these little pieces where we can get these wins and we can know that we're on the right path, the whole thing opens up and we begin to um, project to the highest good of all, right? to, the, to a different purpose, to a lifestyle change. And we become patient in our endeavors. So this is really about, like this impatient projection is really about patient intention. Is I can set an intention that I'm going to do certain things, I want to feel a certain way, or I want to look a certain way, um, or I want to do a certain thing. And when we create that intention, we get to be uh, patient in our goal setting, meaning that we set goals and we put ourselves out there in the best way. And we're free of outcome, free of like resting on an outcome. We're more engaged in the process. We're patient and we're present. So I really, I should say, it's more present intention. But patient, present, you can flip either one. 
So those are the four, okay? Um, boredom, education, intimidation, and impatient projections. Those are the four things that I've witnessed, that I've recognized that, listen, that can be tripping some people up in achieving their version of what health and well-being is. And if this is you and you're like, still, I still don't know what to do, reach out, leave a comment, um, send, it, send a DM. I'm on Instagram at New Wellness Guide. And also for YouTube, I'm on uh, Balanced Wellness LLC channel. So check it out, man. Like, get help, get support. I'm a fitness professional. I'm a yoga professional. Uh, I also work in behavior change and coaching. So what, whatever you need, like, and if, if I'm unable to do it or we don't really click, I'll find someone with you, someone for you that can help you and support you in whatever you're looking to do to get to your level or get to your specific version of what health and well being is. So this is Paul, your new wellness guide. I'm signing off. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to the next video. Peace.